Welcome to Cover to Cover, I'm Stephen Walker, where we're taking a look inside the pages of Out Traveller magazine. We'll be chatting with Editor-in-Chief Jacob Anderson Minshall. But first, here's some exclusive behind-the-scenes footage of our cover stars, James Vaughan and Jonathan Bennett. <laughs> Crazy. The, the one thing I probably never thought, like, oh, you'll be on the cover of Out Traveler. Why would I be on the cover of Out Traveler? And then here we are doing it. So and it's, it's called Outbound. Get it? Outbound. We're out. On that. They know exactly. Out Traveler. That. Outbound. Get it? It's they, 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 because we're queer. Yeah, they, All right. That's mm -hmm. why. One of the slogans we use is, "It's true, we're not a circuit party." But we so, are community. We are fun. We are family. We are a safe space, and we are these bucket list destinations that you want to go to. But it's a. You, Listen, we're not gonna be up till 2 a.m. in the club. That's not what we're doing. We're getting up because we're going out and we're seeing the world. And we do it all together as a family. Breakfast is together. All the tours are together. Lunches, dinners, events at night, theme nights, uh, shows. Everything's done together. And so you really do build that community and you realize, oh, I don't need to be partying until 2 a.m. because I want to get to bed so I can get up and do this again tomorrow with all these people that I'm, I'm bonding with. Yeah, it's a safe place for the LGBTQ plus community to travel the world, check off their bucket list and do it as a community and do it as one big super queer family. Did little James ever think he would be with the love of his life? <laughs> little James hoped. Little James, um, how you doing, baby? We gotta get these neck hairs when we get okay, home. Hang on, little Sorry. James didn't dream of this. Uh-huh, no, but... this is marriage. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's interesting, because like little James hoped, and I remember like standing at our wedding, little James had hoped he had had in his head this like vision of like, I would meet the love of my life and I would marry him in a forest. And we got married in the jungle. And I had the hope, right? But I didn't think I would. It was really dark for me for a lot of my childhood getting, you know, told who you are is wrong. You're gonna. You're gonna go to hell for who you are. You, you you better not be gay. And it just, it really beats you down. And so little James hoped, but little James didn't necessarily think he would. And I'm so happy as grown James to be able to tell that little James, and maybe little James is gonna be watching this, that all those voices, including the voice of your own that's telling you, you won't find it, shut up because you will. Now, James, you and I have history, okay? Yeah. I've been following you for quite some time, but I am dying to know, you're married now. Would you ever take Jonathan with you on an all-stars edition of The Amazing Race? Oh, <laughs> Ricky, there's not enough time in the world to explain why I don't think that would be a good idea. I would love to give him the experience of what that was like on Amazing Race. Like, I didn't even go back on All-Stars. Because mm -hmm. um, it was so good the first time, I would never get that lucky again. It's all luck. This you guys know if you watch the show, it's all luck. And yes. you are currently with all of us and seeing Lindsay Lohan make a comeback. Honey, what is going through your head, Mr. Aaron Samuels? Okay, <laughs> there is nothing more beautiful and exciting and she's back doing what she does best, which is romantic comedies. Period. There is no one better at romantic comedies than Lindsay Lohan. That's just, she is the best. She is the unicorn of that universe. And I wanna be honest, I think Lindsay and I need to do a Christmas movie together where we play best friends because we've been lovers and now, because I'm, I might be gay, <laughs> um, we should be best friends, BFFs. Yeah. I am How about here for a it. very gay BFF Christmas? Let's do it. Maybe it is. maybe Hallmark will pick it up. Maybe. Maybe. Thank you, James and Jonathan. Read the full interview and get to see that fabulous photo shoot in Out Traveller. Now to my sit down with editor in chief, Jacob Anderson Minshall. <laughs> Hello, nice to see you, Jacob. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Stephen. I'm so glad to be here. I know I'm excited to talk about your wonderful magazine. Um, our out cover stars, Jonathan and James, talk about traveling with family and friends being better. What was one destination looking back that you wish you'd have had your wife or friends with you? Yeah, you know, at first, I just have to say that I completely agree with them. There is something that's so beautiful about traveling with other LGBTQ folks. Um, and, you know, my wife and I have actually been traveling together most of our relationship. And just for context, that is over three decades. So we have a lot of time together. But Congratulations. Recently, 
<laughs> Thank you. Recently, in like the last four years, we've had obligations that make it so we're not traveling together. And um, I think the one that really stuck out for me was both Diane and I went to Puerto Rico on different trips. And that was one of those places that we really wished we were, you know, experiencing it together so we could share that and share like memories of that when we came back. So, but no worries. I'm getting another great opportunity to go with Diane on a vacation. We're going on Olivia's 50th anniversary cruise. And I don't know if everybody's familiar with Olivia, but they're a queer women's travel company that morphed out of what was once a women's music label in the 1970s. And Diane and I have been on something like eight Olivia cruises over the years. Some of them while I was still identifying as female. But, it, you know, once I started identifying as male, it'd be like 2,000 queer women and me. But that <laughs> oh is such God. a unique That sounds experience. like fun. Right? And yeah. it's so unique to be in all women environment, especially in all lesbian environment, for a week. So it is really something that's kind of, you know, what James and, and what Jonathan and James are saying is like, there's something about being with community and traveling. And part of that is we just don't get to be the majority very often. And when we are and we're together, we have a great time. Oh, we know how to have fun. And um, in this issue, um, you talk about, um, what's it, um, we're here, um, those three amazing drag queens. And um, I was wondering, what would it have been like if, you know, a show like that and those three crazy drag queens turned up to a town like when you were younger? What would that have meant to you? It would have been amazing, of course. I, I mean, I grew up on a farm five miles outside of a town of 800 people. So, on, and I think I was 14 before I saw PDA between a same-sex couple. And not only was I on a farm, but my parents got rid of the TV. So we were in this very conservative community, Christian community. We were in this very conservative Christian community. Plus I didn't have TV. So the only access I had to a world of diversity, and I mean any diversity, was through books, which is probably why kids called me worm. You know, I guess bookworm was above their vocabulary, so they just shortened it. But, you know, the interesting thing about growing up here was that there were some outlets for gender transgression. I mean, I'm trans, and I didn't have the words for it when I was a kid, but I did dress like a boy all the time. And don't get me wrong, there were ramifications for doing that. There were a lot of pressure on me to, to stop and to conform. In fact, my school, like, started sending me to the uh, shrink, the, the like, you know, district shrink, uh, who kept telling me I had to make friends with girls. So there was a lot of, you know, pressure to conform, but I still just did it. So I was able to just do it. And I know that's a privilege. Well, you're but making friends, friends with girls now, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of girls. Of them at once. And, you know, more to the point, drag was allowed in certain circumstances. What? So every year, our high school had this tradition where the football team would dress up like women and compete in a talent show. And I mean, it was a joke. And I, I mean, that literally, like they, people would dress up to make fun and it was yeah. completely yeah. done for laughs. Well, yeah. then one year, a new kid moved into our area from Hawaii. And when he dressed up, it wasn't a joke. And he was gorgeous. He was so beautiful. And I think that was shocking to our community. Like people weren't laughing anymore and it made them uncomfortable. You know, like it was too real and too queer and drew attention not to the ways guys and girls are different, but how easily one could appear like the other. And I'm pretty sure that was the last year that they had the competition. Thank you for watching Cover to Cover. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit advocatechannel.com for the latest news.